Hello, welcome back. The title here is called Writing Expressions and Equations, uh, Part 1. So here, what we're going to do is I'm going to give, give you a sentence that's uh, it, talking about a mathematical equation or expression, and we need to write the expression down by reading the words, right? And then we'll do the reverse, where we will write some math down and we'll translate it back into a sentence. So I'm going to say right at the beginning here that when we translate from math into words and words into math, it's not always an exact translation because the way we speak is a little bit different than the way we calculate. You'll see as we get through the problems, I'll point it out. Sometimes it's crystal clear and it makes total sense. Sometimes your answer, when you read the words, you might write down a very slightly way of calculate, different way of calculating it. And that is okay. It's because our words, again, don't translate 110%. They can be interpreted in multiple ways sometimes, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So let's jump into the first problem and we'll see how it goes. The words that we're going to read and translate to math are as follows. The sum of 4 and d. So I haven't told you what d is. d could be the distance to the moon. d could be the number of frogs in a bucket. I mean, it could be anything. d could be literally anything, right? But I'm telling you that we're doing the sum of 4 and d. Now, the word sum means addition. And you're doing the addition operation between 4 and D. That's what the sentence is telling you. So if I want to read the sentence, the sum of 4 and D, then I'm going to say 4 plus D, right? And that would be the final answer. Now, this is an example of one where I think is like very clear. There really is no other way to read it, right? So you get the right answer. As we get more complex ones, you'll see there's kind of more than one way to read the problem sometimes. All right, let's read the next one. We're going to, I'm going to give you a phrase. Let's write down the math. Uh, 2 times f equals 21. 2 times f is, is equal to 21. So we have an equal sign in there. And on the left-hand side of the equal sign, we're saying 2 times f. And on the right-hand side, we're saying 21. So it's pretty clear that we're saying 2 times f is equal to 21. And that's a direct one-to-one -one, uh, you know, reading the words. There's really no other way to read it. 2 times f, whatever that is, is equal to, with an equal sign, to 21. So that is, an, of course, an equation because there's an equal sign, and this is an expression because there was no equal sign. All right, again, there's not too many different ways of reading that. Let's take a look at the next one. Uh, in this case, we're going to write down some math, and then we're going to uh, talk about what the math might represent, right? So let me write down the following, m minus 7, m minus 7. There is a couple of different ways you could, you could write that. You could literally say m minus, with the word minus written out, 7, m minus 7. You could totally do that, that's fine. But probably the more mathematical way of, of doing it is to say that it's the difference. Of m and 7. The word difference means subtraction. The word sum means addition. So when we say the difference of m and 7, or between m and 7, then you're going to take m and you're going to subtract away 7, and that's the way that's going to be. All right? So that was going from an equation into words. All right? Let's take a look at the next one. Let's say I give you the following. 8 divided by x is equal to 21. What would be a good way to write that in terms of words? Well, I have to have an equal sign in my words. So I would literally write it down as 8, and then divided by x equals 21. That would translate exactly what I have here. So I would say 8 divided by, by x. That covers the left-hand side. Then I have to say equals 21. Now you can spell out the numbers if you want. That's okay. I'm just going to write the numbers down. 8 divided by x is equal to 21. That is pretty clearly a direct translation of what we have on the board. All right. So here I'm going to give you some words. Let's attempt to translate it back into math. The words are 4 times the sum of y and 3. 4 times the sum of y and 3. So we have to do 4 times something, that's true, but we're not doing 4 times y, and we're not doing 4 times 3. We're doing 4 times the sum. So we need to do the addition first somehow. The way we do it first is by wrapping it in parentheses, y plus 3. Make sure you understand, 4 times the sum of y and 3. So we're not doing 4 times this or 4 times this. We're first adding, and then we're multiplying by 4, and that is a better translation of what we have in terms of words. All right. Let's move on. Let me give you some math here. Here we go. I'm just going to write it down, try not to talk, to not give anything away. And then here we go. 
Now I'm going to write down the answer, and this is probably in my opinion the first one where it's not 100% clear. So what we're doing is we're multiplying by h, and then we're subtracting 8, and then we say that that's equal to 10. So we could write it as the difference of 9 times h uh, and 8 is equal to equals 10. So let's read the words and see if it, if it translates what we're saying. We're saying the difference of something. What are we taking the difference of? The difference of 9 times h, right, this, that's this thing, and the 8 here. And we're saying that that equals to 10. And depending on how you read it, it's a little bit, it, it's a little bit confusing, okay? The difference of 9 times h and and, and uh, uh, h and 8. So depending on where you put the pause in the sentence, it can read a little bit differently, right? So it's not perfect. It's not a perfect translation. If you see a slightly different way of writing it, that's okay. I guess is what I'm trying to tell you. The way I read it is the difference of this thing, 9 times h and 8. So this thing, the difference between this thing and this thing is equal to 10. That's the way I read it, and that's kind of why we're, we're that, that's the answer we're going to put down. All right, next, I'm going to give you some words. 3 subtracted from 9 equals k, uh, I'm sorry, 3 subtracted from 9 times k is equal to 33. 3 subtracted from 9 times k. So it's subtracted from something else. So you don't want to put the 3 first because the 3 is subtracted from something else. What are we subtracting from? 9 times k. That's what comes first. And then we subtract 3 from that. So it's 3 subtracted from 9 times k, this thing, and we're saying that that equals to 33. I think that's pretty clear, and I think that that translates the words pretty well. 3 subtracted from this. You make the mistake sometimes of putting the 3 first, 3 minus 9k, but that's not right because the 3 is being subtracted from something else. So that whatever it is you're subtracting from has to be written first. All right, next sentence. One third of the sum of f and 6, or 6 and f. One third of the sum of 6 and f. So we first have to take the sum of 6 and f. So we're going to have 6 and f, that's the sum. And we're taking one third of this, so we have to compute the sum first, and then we take one third of it, so the one third goes out in the front. One third times this, in other words, is, an, is another way of saying that. When you say one third of something, it means one third times something. The thing that we're multiplying times is the sum of 6 and f, so it's one third times this quantity. That's why we wrap it in parentheses, because we have to do that addition first. All right, next I'm going to write some math down. It's 14 minus h divided by 4. And this, again, is, is not going to be a perfect answer, because it, it can be, you can read it different ways. I'm going to write my answer now, and we'll talk about it. So we can say that it's the difference of 14 and h divided by, by 4. So when you read it literally, it does literally say what's here. The difference of 14 and h, uh, what, the way you're supposed to read this is the difference of 14 and the, quant and the quantity h divided by 4, right? But it depends on how you, where you put the pause in the sentence. If you read it as the difference of 14 and h, and then divided by 4, then it reads the way you have it here. If you read it as the difference of 14 and h divided by 4, there could be some parentheses in there. So I guess I like this sentence. It, it does a reasonable job of, 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 of expressing what is here. But depending on where you put the pause, you might subtract or you might need parentheses in there somewhere, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I don't want to talk too much more about it because ultimately when you translate from math to words and back, it's not going to be exact sometimes as the expression gets bigger and bigger. All right, here's our very last problem. We're going to write down the following. All right, so what are we doing? We're taking one-fourth of j, or one-fourth times j, uh, and then we're adding 3, and then we're saying it's equal to 7. So we could say one-fourth uh, of j plus 3 equals... 7. So this literally translates exactly what we have on the board, but again, where you put the pause in your words can change it. If you read it literally, it's 1 fourth of j plus the number 3 equals 7. That's exactly what we've written, but if you think about it, you can 
phrase it a little differently with the same exact words. One fourth of j plus three would mean that you would be taking one fourth of the parentheses around j plus three, and that would be equal to seven. So is it the one fourth of j and then adding three? Or is it the one fourth of the quantity j plus three? And there's no way to really know exactly from the sentence exactly what you mean. So I'm giving you my answer, but your answer could be slightly different, right? So here we've learned how to write expressions and equations. When you're given words to write the math, and when you're given the math to write the words. They're not always perfect, but we do our best. And when we read books, sometimes we have to translate into math. So I'd like you to solve these. Follow me on to the very last lesson. We'll wrap up the concepts of writing, expressions, and equations.